Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and this is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at the question, what are optional load calculations? Is it just, you know, does that mean load calculations are optional and I don't have to do them if I don't want to? Or, you know, what does it mean? When do we use it? When does it apply? Well, Optional load calculations are actually a name for a type of load calculation, okay? And they just happen to call it optional. The other ones are standard load calculations. So we have standard load calculations and optional load calculations. Some people don't call the other one standard. They just call them load calculations. And then anything else that is listed in 220.82 is going to be considered an optional. But it's an actual name for a method of calculating. And it starts in, uh, you know, 220.80 gives you the general overview of that section. And then it's going to get into part A, part B, and that is when we're dealing with 220.82. And that's where the whole thing starts and it continues on into different scenarios, even for, you know, commercial occupancies and different things. So when we're dealing with optional calculations, multifamily, doesn't matter what it is, optional calculations for schools, restaurants, whatever, we're going to be applying a specific set of rules that are listed out and they differ greatly from those that are in the standard low calculations. Let me give some examples of times you're going to use in the standard low calculation. You're going to use the range table of 220.55. You're going to use the dryer table of 220.54. All of those methods that you learned, you're going to do the 75% for four or more. All of those things are in what we call the standard method. All of those things disappear when we get to the optional method. Now, the only time you're going to use the optional method in testing is if they say the words optional method. Any other load calculation that does not specify is going to be the standard method. Only will you use the optional method for load calculations when it says optional method. Whether it's telling you to calculate appliances, calculate square foot, whatever it is, you're only going to use the optional method when it states the words optional method. And you have to be very careful there. Now, there are some similarities between the standard method and the optional method, like the three VAs per square foot and, you know, things like that. But we um, do the appliances differently. We do the demand factors differently. It's a whole different process. In the field, typically people will use the optional method because it gives you a lower calculation, typically. Typically, it'll give you a lower amp calculation, which may allow you to size a smaller service, use smaller wire, and use smaller pipe. Most inspectors, all of the ones that I know personally, if they require you to do a load calculation, they're going to want you to use the standard method because that's going to give them a more accurate, okay, a more accurate perception of really what the load demand is going to be. But the reason people love doing optional method low calculations out in the field is because it's easy. We take the nameplate of everything, we take the square foot, we apply one demand factor, boom, we add the heating and cooling, and then we're done, right? The standard method takes a little more work. I've got to flip in the tables, I've got to do all these different things, and then I've got to apply the demand factors in a certain order. So with that being said, the optional method is a lot easier. You are going to have to know it for testing, right? Um, because they're going to ask you specific questions about the optional method and you absolutely have to know it. With that being said, out in the field, you may be tempted to use it for a load calculation. And I would say, you know, off the cuff, you know, off the record that, you know, you could probably use it and end up pretty accurately for your load calculations. But if any inspector asks you to do a load calculation, just go ahead and do the standard method. They're not going to want to see the optional method because it's likely going to give you a, a smaller amp draw, which is going to allow you to have things in your favor as far as sizing pipe, wire, and the service. I hope you guys have a great day today. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm so excited that I get to be a part of your journey. I, my, my prayer is and my bargain is, is that this channel is adding value to you. And, and the only thing I ask of you is that you would um, be willing to share this with others, that it could help other people. So I want you guys to win. I'll do anything to help you in life or business. You can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. Hey guys, that's it for today. But I want to remind you to just hang in there and keep fighting. If we all stick together, we'll make it through this and we'll come out stronger than we've ever been before. I'm here to help you every step of the way in life and in business. Just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.